This is Token TV Plus, where the plus means more. I'm your host, Bill Cassidy. And I'm your co-host, Ravi P. Today is March 11th, 2018. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're going to be interviewing Crypto de Medici, a longtime professional cryptocurrency investor. Welcome, Medici. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank Welcome, you for having me Welcome. So uh, before we get started, kind of wanted to learn a little bit about your background and how you got into crypto. Maybe you can just give us a short little story about your origin. I was a sophomore in college, uh, and this was around late 2013, early 2014. So this was when Bitcoin hit $1,000, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a lot of press, a lot of articles being written about it, and I just happened to stumble upon an article early 2014, late 2013, as Bitcoin was going down, uh, about this digital currency that had gone from a few dollars to a thousand dollars. And and so that article got me interested. And so I decided to take a look at Bitcoin. And the first thing that I focused on was the, was the supply. And, uh, and it just... I just it really interested me that there was this digital asset that had risen so much in price and that had a set supply amount. Uh, mm-hmm. And from there, I, I knew that Bitcoin was that this this new space was going to be big. And and so I, I bought some, you know, a few Bitcoin that I could afford back in my college years uh, on the way down. Uh, and, and yeah, that's that's really kind of how I got started in, in, in cryptocurrencies. And, and that's kind of how I got to where I am now. Nice. That is your Genesis block, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. awesome. okay. That's usually how it goes is uh, people, people find Bitcoin and they get into Bitcoin and then they start to discover these other altcoins and whatnot. But there, there is a term or a phrase that's thrown around quite a bit in the crypto industry. And I, I wanted to get your take on this. What, what do you think about Bitcoin maximalism? And through your experience, have you have you ever been a Bitcoin maximalist? I have not. No, I, I don't. Well, I don't like um, very. So Bitcoin maximalism, I mean, just maximalism in general, because I know that there's Ethereum maximalists and, and even for other projects as well. I think the I understand why it's there, obviously, because these are very strong ideologies and and the projects and they've been with the projects for so long that it's essentially you know a, another religion for them uh, mm. but I, I don't i don't i don't like that and, and i don't and i always like to attack those types of thinking because for me at least it, it doesn't help me with with my investing because if if i was to consider myself a maximalist especially a bitcoin maximalist i would have that bias that you know, it's only going to be Bitcoin. Nothing's going to, you know, go, you know, kind of surpass it. Or, and, and so it just, it wouldn't be the kind of bias that I want to have. I, I'm, I'm always someone that tries to kind of, you know, stay in the middle and figure out what's happening and, and, and try to find the opportunities that kind of are not presented in the whole overall market. So while, you know, I'm, I'm fine with maximalists and all that, and, and, it's, and it's great if you believe that, you know, it's going to be Bitcoin or, or whatever other asset, but I personally don't. You know, I don't, I don't really practice it, nor do I. That's why I always kind of resort to attacking it because it's kind of my way of defending myself from the, you know, the getting caught up in all that maximalism. Right. But I mean, for you know, it, it's I, I do understand why something like Bitcoin has such a strong following when it comes to the maximalist because, you know, it is Bitcoin. Um, it has the best development teams. Uh, but yeah, I, I personally don't like that. Right. So you are you are obviously into quite a few other cryptos. Yeah, my, my I mean my main goal is you know just just to whether whether it's with Bitcoin or 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 fiat just make as much money as possible essentially for for my investors. Mm-hmm. Now I mean the focus really is is fiat because my investors don't really care about if their Bitcoin went up or down. They care more about you know did their investment go up. So it's just easier for me to to stay with fiat. Uh, but for me you know I don't discriminate. So if any opportunity presents itself with any asset, I'm gonna take. It. I mean, obviously, you know, if it's if it's you know an, an obvious scam, I'm not gonna touch it. But uh, you know, for me, I'm 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 a free agent essentially. 
in your in your portfolio right now, what are your top five or your your favorite cryptos? Which ones look look the best to you right now? So I like I really like Zcoin. Zcoin is one of my favorite ones. I'm really really mm-hmm. big on I think the the anonymous sectors, the well the privacy sector I think is gonna do very well. And mm-hmm. uh Zcoin is is one of the smaller projects that has a very strong team and, and very strong development and I think the roadmap is also very good. So that one um that's that's one of my assets another one is dash i really like dash i like their their decentralized governance i like how their master nodes run uh they you know they have a monthly budget system which gives them millions of dollars a month to to go to development marketing whatnot Mm -hmm. I, i really like that that's more of a for me i see dash as more of a um a really the most conservative play out of all the others that i have just because uh, just because it's not, you know, it's something that I think appreciates in the longer term. I mean, obviously, it appreciated significantly in the last a year or so. But, uh, yeah. but because it has this really strong community and has, like, this, this budget system, I think it has a lot more potential to continue to survive for the next few years than, than kind of other assets. I was actually part of the Dash community for quite a long time, and you're right, oh. the community is pretty, it's amazing. It's very impressive how strong it is. For an asset that really is actually pretty small, uh, it has one of the strongest communities. Well, you know, this this kind of uh, brings up a question that I saw from our community, and I, I know we were going to... We were going to save this for a little bit later, but I'm going to bring it up now. This is from... Um, our Discord channel, uh, people can ask questions to us, to our guests. You could go into Token TV, and the Token TV Plus channel will allow you to ask questions on the shows. So, uh, Crypto De Medici, one of our listeners uh, by the name of Alameister, wants to know about some research techniques. What should people look for when doing research? Now, you mentioned the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and kind of the activity and looking at their roadmaps. What what other things could we do? So uh, what, the way that I really start is, uh, well, one, one you need to have a very good sense of the market. Uh, what, are, what are some trends that are currently happening now? Uh, is, is the market bearish, bullish? What's the outlook for the next few months, the next year, two years? And then, so as you start looking at kind of the market, so like, so like for me right now, uh, I think I think we're close to the bottom. Um, at least I'm 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 still very bullish on 2018. I, I think if it doesn't mm-hmm. happen over the summer, I think towards the end of the year we're gonna we're gonna see a good increase in in some of these assets. But so the way that I see it is okay. So the, let's say the next year we're gonna see a big appreciation in price for most of these assets because more money is gonna come in. Uh, let's say institutional investors are gonna start coming in. And so that's going to push up the price. So that's, that's my, let's say that's my thesis or my theory. And then from there, I go into, okay, so what are the, which, which assets are going to be, are going to probably be more valuable than others or are going to perform better. So my, my other thesis is that the privacy sector is going to do, is going to do very well just because people are going to realize that something like Bitcoin and Ethereum are just not private at all. And, and so they're going to want to, to, to keep their money in a place that's not only safe, but that's also private. Uh, and so I think, so as, I mean, this is a lot more difficult when you're a beginner, obviously. And, and so that's where I would recommend beginners. So, so the, next, the next thing I'm going to say is going to be more for beginners, but this is more for like people that really want to invest, you know, seriously, essentially. So you understand the market and then you come up with some theories that you think are going to happen in the next few months or the next few years. And then you start looking at the assets that might benefit most from that. And that allows you to kind of narrow down the sectors and the assets that you could, can start kind of doing research on. And so you have these theories, but as you're doing your, the research, you're constantly attacking those theories to make sure that, you know, they kind of, they, they, they stand up to, to the rigor that you need to, you know, have them stand up to. Because I think the worst thing right. that you can do is... Um, you know, is is just kind of fall into some fantasy that 
that your view of the market is the is is the uh, is the view because at the end of the day that's the market doesn't really care about what you think it's it's more about you know what's actually going to happen um and so you understand the market and then you know and then you start really doing the research and so this is where it goes for more of the beginners is you go to the website you know obviously the look of the website kind of matters but it doesn't really because you see most scams that have you know really good websites but you go to the website and then you just find as much information as you can about the the project. So, you you know you look you read the white paper. You look at what the technology is about. If there's other assets that has the same technology, what those assets are doing. So you're trying to know everything about what's happening. Everything. Sure. So yeah. The you know the development team, obviously the roadmap. How is it being funded? Who are who are the first investors? Um, how is it going to be run? The, the governance. Uh, so, you know, every, everything about it, the competition, the sector, uh, has it grown? Has it been a pump and dump? Uh, you know, there's so many. So, like, as you're going through this research, uh, you're beginning to ask yourself a lot of these questions. And, and so you want to write these down so that you can answer them, you know, down the line, essentially. Right. So it's not just, you know, the research on the one token or the one, um, the one project. It's also the landscape surrounding it like a similar tokens where it stands in that ranking um and then the general crypto market itself mm -hmm. is it going yeah, up so is it going down is this going to be value is there value contributions now is there value contributions in the future that i could get gains on so you really gotta really gotta give yourself a good lay of the land is, is the words of wisdom i'm getting from you right yeah yeah it's yeah, for, for especially for beginners, I mean, for anyone really, because actually it's, it's surprising how little people do research, but you want to know as much about the assets that you're kind of looking at. Mm -hmm. and, and from there, that kind of gives you a better perspective as to kind of what the market is doing. So like, you know, when, when Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, when Bitcoin Cash forked off of Bitcoin, you, you know, in, in, at least online, you see all of this kind of these two ideologies going at it. And... Mm -hmm. Now, you as an investor or as a trader, at least, I mean, so I, I would consider this is more of like a swing trade, but I looked at what was happening and then started looking at the backers, you know, Jihan, Roger, like all these people kind of behind the scenes. And as the price kept going down and, and, the, and the FUD essentially kept increasing, mm -hmm. that was giving me signals that there was going to be a reversal some, somewhere, somehow. And so my thesis was, okay, there's going to be a reversal in the next month or, or two or three months. How is that going to work out? And at what price should I start getting in so that I could take advantage of this reversal? Uh, and so that's where like your research really comes in, in the sense of you, you know, that Jihan, you know, is, is going to back it. You know, that he is going to put money into creating an infrastructure for Bitcoin cash, which is going to help it, uh, you know, seem more legitimate, probably Coinbase is going to add it. And so you start building from your, th your thesis that is grounded on, on kind of your research you start building kind of an ability to see kind of into the future and hopefully you're right about it. You've built this system to vet these projects. Is this for your own investment purposes or are you investing for other people? Like what's your, what's your business here? Yeah. So I, I manage, I manage a private investment fund. So yeah, I have, I have investors that, uh, that, you know, I have obviously focus on growing their money. And then, but now I'm actually in the process of, of building up a separate research team that's going to essentially take, take the work that I've done and then the work that others have done and then really scale it up to be kind of on another level and have, have research analysts do, doing this full time. Because I, so I think uh, the, you know, there's obviously a ton of opportunity in this cryptocurrency market, but there's not enough work on on where on helping these projects get to where they should be mm -hmm. um, kind of in the consulting side, the research side. And, and I think in order to be able to consult these projects, you need to be able to have very, very strong research, not only in the present day, but also kind of in the future. So like something like Ethereum, you, you want to know what the, what's, what's going on with scaling. You want to know, you know, who are the bigger players in the scaling and, and so the, the better, the more research you have and like the more kind of insights you have, the, the better you're kind of able to, to navigate these, you know, these, these field minds essentially. Mm. So research is 
key, ladies and gentlemen out there. I got another question for you. I've made mistakes in my crypto career. I'm, I'm sure, Bill, you've you've made your share of mistakes. Good thing about mistakes is that you get to learn some really valuable lessons and mm -hmm. correct that for the future. What are some mistakes that you might have made over the past few years? And what were the takeaways from those mistakes? My biggest, I think my biggest mistake is that I, I don't, I don't sell when I know I should. Um, so I, I am a more of a long-term investor. So like when I get really good positions, I, I, I don't really care about, you know, the, the short-term swing, swing trades and all that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the biggest thing has been really that I just, that I, I take, and, and, and in crypto, it's obviously different because long term in crypto could be, you know, a year, two years or, or even less. So it's not really that long. But mm -hmm. taking that mentality and perspective too far and not taking advantage of kind of the short term movements of the market. Uh, so I, I, I would say that that's I, mean, I wouldn't call it a negative because actually I think that strengthens my own perspective because, you know, I, I'm playing more for the long game. So. Mm -hmm. although i did miss out on opportunities to essentially sell the top and then buy back in the bottom mm -hmm. it um it, it conflicts a lot with my own philosophy of of just buying a very undervalued project and then just kind of letting it run and letting the market kind of do its thing but yeah right. I, I would say it's so i i think that's something that a long-term investor is always going to be struggling with is missing out on these quote unquote obvious plays in the short term while still trying to figure out and navigate kind of the long term. Mm. Um so that's that's been one. I mean another um another would be probably not doing enough research on other assets. So getting too caught up in my own investments and yeah. not going out there and continuing to look for more opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, I do the same thing actually. I just like, I mean, there's so many coins out there. There's an ICO every 15 minutes for Christ's sake, but it's, I don't know. I, I kind of fall into, um, into token love with some of these, some of these uh, projects and I, I just get tunnel vision on, on some things. There's a lot of hindsight in this industry. And if you just keep emotions out of your investments and ignore the FUD or the FOMO, and just stick to your philosophy, like Medici is saying, then every, everything should work out for you. The mistakes nice. are basically just hindsight. Like you look yeah. back on them and if you made a reasonable, rational decision, then that's what matters. Obviously, we've seen a lot of changes over the past. Uh, you said you joined around 2013. That's about five years ago, past five years or so. Do you have any um, predictions of what the crypto space, how the world will have integrated crypto currencies, blockchain technology, what have you in the next five years? I think it will be more widely used and accepted as a currency. Uh, and, and so you'd be able, you're going to be able to have a lot, you know, most of these credit card debit cards that are going to run through your cryptocurrency uh, holdings. But it's, it's very, it's very difficult to, to really figure out where cryptocurrency will be because we have something like ethereum that came out what was it maybe three years two years and, and now it's grown into this massive ecosystem that's pumping out not only just icos but just a ton of development a ton of uh, a ton of individuals that are very smart that are building all these companies and so i, I think what we're going to see is a lot more uh, of these decentralized types of uh, projects, so like decentralized exchanges, uh, decentralized governance, these these companies and, and funds that are going to be essentially decentralized and a bit more transparent. So the decentralization is going to develop very well, but mm -hmm. I also think these decentralized entities are going to, to have a really tough time with uh, centralized organizations because I, I think at the end of the day, humans are just way better at working in a centralized manner and this decentralization idea that we've had in the recent years is it's, it's great it's a great idea but it's still too new and so it's not going to be able to compete 
with decentralized entities as well. And so what you're going to have is decentralized uh, exchanges that are going to be doing very well and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously having a lot of supply, but you're going to have these centralized exchanges as well that will increase their offerings in order to compete with, I think, so really the way that I see it is the market is just going to become more competitive and that's also going to provide a lot more opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 just more more people, more money. Um, it's probably sure. going to be a little less uh, when it comes to the fluctuations. Um, probably ICOs are still going to be big, but I think it's it's going to become more institutionalized. Uh, okay. and, and so with with ICOs, um, only accredited investors are probably going to be able to get in or or a select few of individuals. And so the, the, the masses are going to be pushed away from ICOs and they're going to be pushed back into kind of the general cryptocurrency market. There was a recent statement by the SEC regarding crypto exchanges and they're possibly running unlawful online trading platform for digital assets. So since you run a, a private investment fund and you've kind of been working in the industry, do you think uh, government regulation in regards to cryptocurrencies is a good or bad thing? And what are your thoughts on this recent statement by the SEC? So I, I wouldn't say regulation is great, but I think it's just it's it's a it's a necessity uh, just because humans just can't for some reason they just can't. It's like they need like a dad essentially to to kind of hold them along, and so that's what that's why you've seen all these ICOs, a lot of ICOs scam all these people because it's just it's like they need you know they need the government to tell them you know this is what to, this is what you're supposed to eat this is what you're not supposed to eat so unfortunately regulations are needed you know whether i agree with them or not it doesn't really matter because it's just it's going to happen and and so I, I think it's going to be good in the sense of it's going to protect the the majority of investors that have no idea what they're doing but um I think, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think overall, I think it's good. Uh, obviously, you... it's going to depend on how control and, and kind of stringent they are. But I think there's a lot of negatives right now in the sense of decentralization and kind of the beauty of it, that people are just not responsible enough to kind of be able to do it in a way that, that kind of is, is more positive than negative. Right. So uh, what, what are your suggestions for people trading out there? What are your, some of your favorite trading platforms? So I, I don't do much trading, but when, when I do, it's, I, I, like, I like Bittrex. I like, I'm starting to like Poloniex again. So for, for more Asian projects, I like something like um, Gate.io, uh, KuCoin, uh, Binance. Binance is okay. I don't really like the, the, the layout of Binance. I, I do like the exchange itself, but I don't. I don't really like the layout of it, um, but but I'm not you know I, I don't really trade much, so I don't you know most 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 of what I do is just I do research and then if I find an asset that I really like and or if an existing asset that I'm already in that has that has that is at a good price, then I just go into you know send send some Bitcoin into one of these exchanges and then and then buy it and, and take it out. So I, I don't have I don't keep almost anything on on exchanges and and I think that's that's something that a lot of people need to well i think that's it just shows how early the the this whole ecosystem is because most people keep their money on exchanges which is fine and and i think that's actually the trend that we're going to end up seeing in the sense of exchanges are going to become more like banks and and so people you know they're not incentivized to get a hardware wallet or or, or to keep their money kind of with them, but they're just going to keep it at these exchanges because they're just lazy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So yeah. do you not keep it in the exchange for security purposes? Is that the primary reason? Yeah, yeah, it's security. But I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's more security. But I think it's just knowing that, you know, if there was anything that was to happen with when it comes mm -hmm. to, you know, login difficulties or hacks or anything, you know, you just know where your money is. Yeah. But when it's on, ex on an exchange, you, you never know what's going to happen. And so, like, we saw this with, so I participated in the Bitcoin private, uh, the fork. And and so, you know, leading up to, to the fork, which was going to happen, uh, let's say, you know, six hours from now, 
Bitcoin, I mean, Bittrex wasn't allowing deposits and withdrawals. Uh, and so, yeah. and, and they hadn't, they hadn't said that they were going to, to allow the fork. And, and so that's, that's kind of what happens when, when you have your money on, on one of these exchanges is that you're essentially, you're essentially kind of, you know, you have to do what the exchange tells you to do essentially, or, or you just kind of get, you know, it's, it, it you don't have control over your money essentially. Yeah, it comes down to control for sure. Yeah. So here's um here's uh, our last question from the community. This is from the user uh, Encrypted. Do you invest in initial coin offerings, or do you wait to see how they start? I, I wait to see how they start. I, I there's some ICOs that I've been interested in, so I, I haven't bought any ICOs yet. But there has been some ICOs that have been interesting. But I think the uh, I. Is that, just, a, I, is that I, a risk a risk assessment decision? Just kind of they're too risky for you, or what is uh, that? I just the I, the IC the SEO game is just not it's not for me. Yeah, uh, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of hype, a lot of assuming that the the moment the ICO comes out on an exchange, it's going to pump, and then hopefully you know you you get out with your money. It, it's just it, there's a lot of um, a lot of things involved, and and what I don't like is that the you know the products haven't been established they don't have a community yet they haven't gone through the difficulties of of being uh you know uh, an exchange i mean uh, an asset that's being traded on an exchange and so i i like these projects that have been around for at least six months to a year that have that have really shown the volume uh maybe some development maybe some some interesting kind of viewpoints uh, and so I, I like to stick to kind of things that have been around in the market for, for at least six months. I don't know if you're in the USA either, but they, they don't even allow United States investors to put money into ICOs. Yeah, it's just, it's, they've been really cracking down on all that. Yeah. So I, I wanted to start wrapping it up here, but I, I did have just a couple more questions before we let you go. Uh, this one's more of a fun one, just to see if it matters or not, but... Uh, do you think the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto matters? No, I, I well, it, it really doesn't. But I, th so if the identity, so like let's say like Craig Wright was to be be actually Satoshi, it mm -hmm. would it would break the hearts of a lot of people that have built this ideology around Satoshi. Yeah, but when it comes to you know, I, I don't think anything would change really in the sense of. I think that in the short term, it would affect the price and, and maybe kind of the, the community itself. But they would realize that it doesn't matter who Satoshi is. Obviously, we're thankful for, for what he or she or, or it created. But they don't have control over, over the asset anymore. I mean, obviously, it will. Okay, so actually, it would, dip, it would matter a lot because we know that Satoshi holds a ton of Bitcoin. And so yeah. if we knew that it was someone like Craig Wright, it would, I think, it would actually cause cause some panic. So it would depend on who it is. Yeah. Uh, the main that's that's really the main problem is is how much Satoshi controls of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so actually, it probably would be a negative. But I think it all depends the, on who it is, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing, and also it's just like the the lure, like the beauty of Bitcoin. I think would would be kind of squan squandered because I think that's that's what's so great about Bitcoin is that this person that we know we don't know anything about created this asset that's you know in the hundreds of billions and, and it's kind of like that that mystery is what people really like yeah mm -hmm. definitely wow that um, was a good question i like that question that makes you think <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a rabbit hole that you can go down but it's, it's fun yeah. to think about um, like what if what if satoshi nakamoto was me <laughs> <laughs> what if he's hanging out in our chat room just chilling yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> he, he or she is one so of the if, trolls yeah uh if the listeners could take one thing from this entire interview uh what what would you recommend that thing be so i i'd like to leave with two things that the first one is is doing research and, and really kind of ignoring the the money side and 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 really focus on getting a very good understanding of, of, of the assets that you're looking at and the market itself. And the second thing would be to, to really observe yourself and, and figure out how to 
you know, to, to know yourself in the sense of know when you're being, when you're emotionally manipulating yourself or know when you're acting out of your strategy, because at the end of the, at the end of the day, this game is all about the, the mental game. And so it's, it's about how, how much you know yourself and how, how much you know when, when you're kind of getting ahead of yourself. And, and so I think that's, it's really important to, to know who you are and kind of, and what your limit is and also kind of what your strategy is. And, and so, you know, you're not going to be a, an amazing trader and amazing, an amazing ICO, ICO guy. You know, you're not going to be this amazing guy that can do everything. You should know what your strengths are and then focus on building those strengths and, and becoming really good at kind of that specific area that, that you've, you know, you've kind of figured out and that you love and that that's kind of like your natural kind of skill set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's a genius in a bull market. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so do you have, uh, do you have any links or like plugs you want to uh, throw in before we let you go? Uh, well, so you can follow me on at crypto de Medici. Uh, no, I think that that's it. I mean, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, inviting me to the uh, podcast and I enjoyed the conversation. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Great. Thanks yeah. a lot. All right. Take care, Medici. Thank you for listening to Token TV Plus, where the plus means more. Follow us on Twitter at token underscore TV. Check out our website, tokentv.io. There you can join our emailing list, find links for our Discord channels and YouTube. We at Token TV Plus want to remind you that all the content presented in this show is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. Thanks for listening, folks, and we'll see you in the next block.